Hey, welcome back to the series on optimizing your OBS for better productions and avoiding these common mistakes. This third mistake is one we're gonna dive into and it's gonna be covering how to set up your audio filters for your mic. So all the audio effects that make you sound great on your video and for your live streams. So we're gonna be covering how to set that up in the right order, the right audio chain in this video. So let's dive in. The next mistake is not using your audio filters in the right order. So what are audio filters? Audio filters in OBS here. See, I've got a microphone here added into the mix in OBS Studio. So you can see here, it's actually picking up my voice because the mic's plugged in. I have a separate mic here, which I'm gonna demonstrate in just a moment about these filters. So obviously the first thing is you wanna set the input gain on whatever mixer or audio interface you have. So see, as I get close to the mic, you can see the meter going higher. And what an audio filters do is they're basically effects that you add to the microphone or whatever audio source you're using. So I've got my microphone here and to access those filters, you can click here and go to filters. And you can see I've got a few filters here added in the order that you should use them if you're gonna set them up for your productions here. So I'll explain these and what they are and why you should have them in this order. So. You always wanna have noise suppression or noise gate at the start of your audio signal. So if you think about where an audio signal comes from, it comes from your mouth and then it goes into the mic and then it goes through the cable into your mixer or your computer. So that's the start of the signal chain. So any other noise that comes around in the room, any sort of echo or any sort of background noise, that's also gonna come through the mic as well. So if you've got speakers that are playing back and you're getting an echo and not wearing headphones, all going to come through the mic there so noise suppression helps reduce that other noise so we can just get the signal that we want which is our speaking voice or whatever we're capturing basically so here in obs studio first in the signal chain a bit of noise suppression if you want to cut out that noise so with everything turned off here and i'll bring up the mic here so i'm holding it in my hand and take a look at the audio mixer when i stop speaking You'll notice that around negative 50 dB, down near the bottom, there's still green bars showing that this mic's picking up audio. Now, noise suppression, it's similar to a noise gate here. The purposes of these is to reduce that noise of the noise that we don't wanna hear and try and keep the volume and the noise that we want from what we're capturing, which is our voice in this example here. So if I turn on noise suppression, you can see that it's stopped. Now it's bringing back up because I'm speaking, but you can see that it's actually stopped here in the mixer when I stop speaking, it goes away. So in this signal chain here, having noise suppression just on this setting here that I've got actually is good enough. But if you needed further assistance and a bit more tweaking, you can use a noise gate as well. And it's gonna do the same job. So if I turn off the noise suppression here, see we've got our noise coming back through again and we don't want that we just want to capture our voice at the threshold of the volume that we're speaking at here and you can see we're peaking around negative 30 with my speaking voice if i go closer it's going to get a little bit higher but from this distance here it's about negative 30 so you want to tweak these parameters here so if we turn on our noise gate you got a couple of different options here so you're going to see here there's an open threshold close threshold now it's a bit more complex the noise suppression is a bit more easier to use. So if you're not too familiar with these sort of settings, throw on the noise suppressor, it should do its job here. But there's other parameters here for the noise gate, basically the attack time, hold time and release time. So attack times how fast that it's gonna kick in, how long it's gonna hold for. Basically you want the noise gate to be active and release time is just when it's gonna release. If it's gonna release really fast, it'll be like really quick, um, or if it's gonna have a little bit of a delay, so it's not as like abrupt and cuts off really quick. So it can be a bit tricky to get these settings right. It's probably not best to copy these settings because these settings aren't gonna translate to anyone else's setup because it's gonna be dependent on the background noise, the gain that you have on your mixer and your mic, the type of mic you're using. So these settings are not gonna be customized for you to copy or anything like that. There's no standard settings to copy off. These two top sliders here are gonna be the ones that are gonna be using the most here. If you are using it, it's gonna be the closed threshold and the open threshold and that's a decibel level you can see there. So, so the closed threshold is the level at which the noise gate closes. So effectively blocking the quieter sounds below this threshold. So you can see it's at negative 21. So you can see the background noise here. Once I stop speaking, it's gonna hit around negative 45 on the meter. 
So you want to set this close threshold above the background noise that you want to remove. So whatever noise is coming in through that meter, set this threshold above that. So whatever the peak of that is, of your background noise, just set that decibel level just above that. As you can see, if I drag it down, it's above it and it's removed it, but we're not receiving any signal from our mic yet. So the open threshold is the one that we want to set where it actually opens up and lets our voice through. So we want to set this open threshold above the noise that we want to remove. So we're still capturing our voice and tweaking those settings here. We turn it off here, see where I'm speaking. So when I'm speaking, it's hitting roughly a negative 30 on that bar. So if I turn this back on, set it to about negative 30 and you can see my voice is coming through in the signal now. So you just got to really tweak this and find a good balance. So the more I bring it down, the more it's going to let my voice through and any other background noises back through there. See, you can see I just brought it down with the close threshold, remove some of that noise. It takes a little bit of work there, but the real easy way to do it, just throw in the noise suppression. And if that doesn't work for you, then maybe look at maybe trying the noise gate. The next filter is a three band EQ. Now this is the next in the signal chain. So you go your suppression and all your noise removal, and then you would add some EQ or equalization. So a very simple one here. That's very basic within OBS Studio here. It just has a high, mid and low. Now, basically the way that you would use this, if you're doing talking head video like this, which I assume most of you are, and not any other instruments or anything like that. Now you probably only want to remove low end in a microphone. Uh, the more low end you have in a audio source, it's harder to get the level louder. So you might want to only tweak the low here. And the way to do that with this equalizer here would be as you go down, it's just going to remove. So it's doing like a uh, removing the low end here to give you a bit more of a visualization of what was actually happening there. I've got this more high end EQ here that's a bit more powerful and has more features. Basically, if I click a band here, now this is what the low filter was doing. The low filter was basically just doing this. It was reducing it like this to a certain amount of decibels. So removing that low end, you can see here where that low end is. And we really don't need much low end in a microphone voice. A lot of the low, low sub stuff doesn't really need to be in there. Like the mid range would be doing something like this, reducing the mid range. So it would be bringing it down and the high was either bringing it up in decibels like this or just lowering it. So that's basically what it's doing in a sort of visualizing sense there with that three band EQ. So play around with those settings, see if you can get a good sound with your microphone. This leads us to the next part of the signal chain. So, so far we've got noise suppression, noise gate if we need it, as well as an EQ to shape the sound that we like. And we want to compress it and I've got a compressor here. So we turn the compressor on and what we have here is a couple different settings and we have a ratio. So that's just the amount of the ratio that we're sort of multiplying the sound by. For vocals here, for speaking, around two is a great place to set it. So you can obviously go higher, but two is a good starting point there. And then we've got another threshold here and this is gonna be where the decibel level on your meter here, where you want that compression to actually kick in and take place. So if you bring it down lower, then where all that noise is, so going way down like negative 50, that's going to compress and bring up the volume and even it out with the, the sounds that we want to remove, the lower sounding frequencies that were lower in volume. But because we're speaking here, you can see my voice sort of peaking around negative 15. If I talk a little bit quieter, you know, it's still quite high there. So we can go negative 20 around there. So around here is going to be pretty safe to bring up my quiet speaking voice to like where I'm speaking a bit louder. One of those things too, just got to play around with it there. Check the meter here and see what comes out and how it sounds. The attack time there, you want to have a pretty quick attack time as well and a release time. You know, the default settings that comes out when you add the compressor is a good starting place. If we add the compressor here, you can see it, the release is still at 60, six, you know, attack time. You know, it's got a higher ratio here, but it's a good starting point how they've added it. So I recommend maybe just tweaking the threshold and the ratio there to see what you like. And then we have the output. So I've boosted it. See, when you compress, it's gonna bring down the volume. So if I bring this back to zero, and if I turn off the compressor here, now the compressor is turned off and you can see the volume on the meter there. 
we're sitting around negative 30 with no compression. And you can see the volume's going a little bit higher. It's going a little bit lower. It's very dynamic in the sound. If I turn the compressor on here, now we do have the compression settings on, but our volume's still a little bit lower there. So this output game will just help increase our volume. So if I keep speaking and bring it up here, I can actually bring up the volume that we're compressing here. And as it's going up, it's going to the yellow there, which is a good spot. We don't want to go to the red and anything over red is going to clip and distort, which brings us to the very last piece of the chain here, which is very important. And people do this wrong all the time. They put this at the start of their vocal chain is a limiter. Now, if you think of a limiter, what the word is limit. So it's going to limit whatever's going to coming out of the end. Like we spoke earlier, you know, my voice is the start of the signal chain going to the mic. It has to have an end point and like reach to the end and the very end. We don't want the sound to go to infinity. We want it to reach and stop at a point here. So we've got negative six. As you can see here, this is like a safety net where it's gonna block the sound. So even if something's super loud, like a big bang or something comes into the mic, it's gonna just hit that wall and stop at negative six. So we can change this, but negative six is good for video, negative three, negative six for good for live streaming and video. A limiter is sort of like a compressor, but its main job is just to brick wall the sound and stop it. It's very important to set it up in this way. This is the right order that you want to set your audio filters up. Do you want to think remove any noise that you don't want? Add any nice frequencies or sounds that we want to shape for our sound. Compress that sound to make it loud and then limit that sound so it's ready to be produced for a video or an output for a stream. Thanks for watching. Take a look at part four up next and that's going to be covering a cool feature for your live streams and your video production that's going to take them to the next level and make your life a lot easier. You can utilize this one tool, which is the multi-view feature. So click here to watch that one.